So here's the problem. A while ago, this broke. It doesn't really turn anymore. Yeah, there's no finesse in, so I'm, really, I'm not able to really unlock the door anymore. So it, it kind of turns, but not all the way. So I need to figure it out. How are you? How are you? And uh, that's what we're going to try to do today. So I'll give you an example. So if you look right there, right? That's as much as I get. A little hard to see, but either way, it doesn't unlock the door. So something is stopping it from turning all the way. I need to figure what figure out what that is because this is the currently there are no other way to enter this vehicle other than the driver's side. And if the driver's side fail, then I'm screwed. So let's try to see if we can figure this one out, and then we'll, uh, at some other point, we'll get to the trunk. The trunk also has the same issue. So one of the reasons why I want to fix this, right, is like, this door is pretty much playing me every time. So here's the scenario, right? You want to act chivalrous, and uh, you know, open a door for a lady, you go over to that side of the door, this passenger side, and you realize like, ah, crap, I can't even unlock it. So then you go over to your driver's side, unlock it, right? And then you're like, then she starts to enter. You know, well, that defeats the whole purpose. What's the point, right? You just like lost on the man card. So let's go ahead and fix that because if that's not a good enough motivator. I don't know what else is. We get this door panel off a bit. Phillips back here. Looks like that. And there is we have to pull this off right here. There's like a little tiny tab. It's, yeah, just pull. Okay. I that's how that comes off. I think I have to take that off. Feels like it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I was saying is right here. It's right here. So this way just gonna like push it in. Just to get over, overcome the uh, tension, so it can slide off of there. And that pushes into this part here, goes into there. Okay. So. It's probably going to be a screw right here. Yeah, I think so. There's a Phillips in here. This electrical connector needs to be removed also. So to do that, I think it just kind of like a tab maybe it's up on. I think. I'm not really sure. I think it's under here. Yeah, it's under. So, go that out. That looks like that just slides right in. To here. Interesting. Okay. So right back here is another uh, Phillips. to see but there is a like a like a blue pin right so that's attached to the lever here that unlocks the door so 
that right there needs to pop out. Uh, to do that, you kind of like have to slide. You can't do it with one hand. There we go. So that should do it. You kind of like lifting up a little bit on the plastic that holds it, and then turning it. There you go. Like that. All right, and I should be able to just kind of yep, lift it up. So that's how you do that. There's probably a couple fasteners back here behind this speaker. So you can see right here, the manufacturer placed a spot for you to like push in on. So maybe this might just pop right off. I'm wrong. There's like three screws. There's one there, one there, and one here. Yeah. Let's get those out. Uh, bumping you. Anybody like to do the hardest one first? I tend to like to do that. And now I didn't do that and I just dropped my screw. Oh, got it. Looks like that. It's three of those. <sighs> Hardest ones are gonna be the ones closest to you. And they look like that. I wonder if I could take that off. Right back here, there's a speaker. Speaker wire. Uh, connector. The speaker. squeeze down on the sides. It's got a lot of oily stuff on it. I don't know where that's from. So, you know, before you fix a problem, you have to try to understand the problem, right? So, this here, right, that's all attached to right in here. Right? You can see, sorry. I'm trying to do my best. Okay, maybe? Alright. So you see how that, that mechanism works? I don't even know what you can see right now. Let me disconnect that. Get you over here. Okay. That might be better. So you see how this, this goes down, up, down, up like that? Okay, so this, this here on this side, this is the, that's, that's the one we want right here. Right, we want that. <laughs> 
that one right there. Yeah, so what should happen here, right, is when okay, this we want we want to know what happens when this goes up. That's on lock, right? So that's down, right? We want it to move up like this. So when we we push down down on it. You can see it goes up, you know. So this has to go down. And then it has to do this. It has to go down. And then it goes down. What orientation is that for the key? Well, let's take a look. In. Let's see. Yep, okay, so turn in. Okay. Right? No, turn left. Okay. So we turn left like that. That goes. That makes this push down, which pushes that up. So, something. We don't know what it is yet. Something is uh, stopping it from going all the way down. So let's just try to figure that out. So let's talk about this. So right here, right on this lever here, if I could disconnect that without breaking it, that would be nice. And I can just kind of push down on it to see if this has full range of motion. And if it did, uh, if it did then I wouldn't have to take the lock off. Right, so that's the nice thing if I could just disconnect that without breaking that plastic, but I don't want to do it because the angle is too weird. So, I'm gonna have to unscrew this. So, there's a 10 millimeter here, and then there's a 10 millimeter here. So, unscrew those. Can't really film it while I show you, so I'm just gonna do it off camera. Looks like I lied. Actually, I can kind of do it one handedly. Of those. All right, so the uh, series right here is like a little C clip. So they want to take that off, right? That one's gonna go flying somewhere. So I'm gonna stop right here and do it off camera. There you go. Okay, so that actually. That works really well because now I can actually test this by itself. Let's see. Looks like it has full range of motion, doesn't it? Yeah, that does. Okay, so I'm going to say, it's safe to say that the failure point is in the lock itself. The locking mechanism is no longer able to turn all the way, so we need to figure out, sorry, we need to figure out why this doesn't turn all the way. So, uh, here we go. So you see this right here? That needs to be popped out of there. See, so you got a lot driver just kind of like kind of go like that kind of push it out get it out of this right here all right I'll do it off camera okay, so right here is a C clip that kind of holds you gotta get that up underneath there like that it holds this metal bracket on, and that metal bracket is, you need to get that off if you're trying to get the, the handle off. So you want to just kind of get a pick in there, see how that pulled down. And then you just, yeah, 
don't do that, but you get the idea. Looks like that. That's what was holding. That's what's holding that on. I should should be able to get the lock. Yeah, out there. Okay. Yeah, that's out. There's a lock mechanism. That and that. It's really important for me to remember how things get put back together, so I kind of uh, always put it back immediately once it, you know, once it falls and stuff. So obviously, can't mess that up because that's where that goes. We know that's the key goes in here. Heat or not. Yeah, it is. That slide's not in there. Okay, so you can't really mess that up. So. Yeah, I think it probably, it's probably more like, more like that, and then this, this slide's in there. There's two, see it's keyed, so this side's a little wider. This is a little smaller. This matches up with the with that. So like that. That's so how that goes. And that's what it looks like in the front. Alright, so that's 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 the prize possession. This is what we popped out right here with the flathead screwdriver. Just kind of slides in there and holds on. Great. So, yeah. Well, we need to figure out what's going on with this. Just want to like uh, <clears throat> talk about something else. The uh, locksmith said something really important. The uh, failure itself. For this uh, generation of Honda, is not it's not uncommon for the keys to get worn out. And these are two bad keys, by the way. And uh, he mentioned that the right, it was uh, something to do with the model, the generation after. So that would be like the 2001 on up Ooh, that have the laser cut keys. He says that is a very common the failure that we experience here is very common in that generation. So, if you have like a 2001 model on up with the laser cut keys, they tend to wear out real easily. So, just keep keep that in mind. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, hope that you get to uh, resolve your key problems. And a really important thing, right, in hindsight, that you, it was a dead giveaway with the key. It's the fact that the trunk also failed at this so it was like, what are the chances of the trunk lock and the passenger door not being able to uh, unlock would have failed at the same time and the key not staying inside the ignition? All three of those things kind of indicate that the key itself was worn, you know? The driver door never really had an issue uh, with unlocking. I think just because the lock itself might be pretty worn down from years of just opening and closing. So it's already probably pretty worn. So it was able to accommodate the, the sloppy key uh, with the leaves not completely going all the way down. So that's my theory on that. I bet you if I took it apart, I would see that it's the tumbler section, that the barrel around the, the leaves are probably like pretty worn down. So yeah, that's it. I just wanted to like uh, add a little extra detail. I think the, the context is really important. All right, thanks again. See you next video. So when you are usually checking the key, try to check with the both sides because the one side could be cut well, another side could cause some issues. So usually the reason failure is, could, I mean, it could be a few reasons of the failure. The one is the guy who is operating with the machine is not putting the key in the right position in the machine to, in order to cut it properly. 
another failure is going to be the machine is not calibrated well. And it could be a failure too. And the third failure is going to be like if the guy uh, didn't work through the code, usually the every lock has his own code. Like for example, you can like see here like there's some like codes here. It's not like really visible, but as far as the like experienced locksmith, they can like figure out what the code is. Like on this year of the cars, the code is usually like a four digits and it should start somewhere from the 5,000 and end up with the 8,000 something. So the experienced locksmith usually will go with this code instead of that you just pulling up the wafers and sometimes the, the locksmiths they don't do this, they don't do this, they don't disassemble the lock, they don't pull out the parts. So what they are doing, they are cutting the uh, the key by impression. What it means when they pull out the key, they are putting the blank key and they are looking inside and they are kind of trying to figure out what the pattern is, how deep they are going to cut each cut. So that could be another failure. The guy who cut the key just didn't use the code, didn't start digging in there, didn't start trying to figure out what the code is for key and just like went with like impression. So that's the main reason. <laughs> wow. Here so, we go. So this, this guy saved my day. I just yeah. want to let you know. Um, they are, can you have your business card? Oh yeah. Um, of course. Uh, yeah. Business card. We have a lot of business cards. Yes, I do. Uh, well, either way, this is what happened. Like uh, the key is pretty worn down, as you can see here. This is a worn key, and it wouldn't open a trunk or the the passenger side. So now everything works. Passenger door, and they set the same key for the ignition. And I couldn't couldn't have gotten it couldn't have gotten it done without the um, a truly experienced locksmith. Uh, but either way. Uh, I'm going to definitely share with you their contact information. So here we go. Of course. Right. They are amazing. They totally like took care of me. Called them up in a, in a clutch end of the day. And they just said come on over and say, and they, they, they fixed it, you know? It was amazing. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. New key again. I haven't done that in 10 years. New key. Yeah. Hey, listen, thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed this video. I want to let you know that the, uh, in general, um, when I took this apart, there was nothing special that I saw. And that's how I kind of knew that uh, the key itself was uh, the issue. Um, it was all, it, like the tumbler itself was just turning. I'm sorry I didn't record that. It, I could see where when I slide the key in, it wouldn't push down all the leaves. The leaves are these metal pieces that stick up. And uh, they uh, they were not going all the way down. So it was obvious to me that the key was not these grooves push the leaves in. And this was like so worn right here. Um, and that was the issue. So yeah, I got a new key immediately. I knew right away that I was gonna solve the problem with the um, trunk also and another sign that I had that indicated failure was uh, the ignition when I put the key in right for some odd reason it was just dropped right out it was like it was just wasn't staying in there it wasn't like a leaf was missing on the tumbler so it was an indicator that it was so worn that it was just like useless so all in all $75 got three new keys absolutely worth the uh, headache being removed and the quirkiness of owning a car this old. So if you like the video, thumbs up. Don't like it, thumbs down. If you think something else we could have done better, let me know. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. That'd be great. I'll see you next video.